Miguel. And, and we're, we're Comey. Comey. So tonight we're making Chinese, Chinese takeout. takeout. So how did this start or people think? Uh, well, you know, we want a Chinese food, but unfortunately we can't get it here. So um, we decided to make it. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. So what so are we making tonight? We've done this before a couple times, actually. Um, so we've done a couple different dishes, but we decided tonight that we definitely got to kind of wheel it in a little bit, and we concentrated <laughs> on two dishes. So two of, our two of our favorites. I'm doing combination lo mein, and I'm gonna do beef and broccoli. Super good. So if you guys hang out with us for a little bit, we're gonna show you how everything together for Chinese takeout. Hey guys, we are back. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our beef prepped for our beef and broccoli and our combination lo mein. So I've got four sirloin steaks here. For three of them, I'm going to slice them thin for the beef and broccoli. And then I'm going to chunk up the last one for the combination lo mein. So I've got my nice long slicer here. The first thing I want to do is trim some of this fat off. So just going to come around the edges, trim some of this fat off. If you're feeling really adventurous, you can take a hot pan and just throw this in there. That'd be kind of fun. But it's um, not super comfy. So let's just get some of that extra excess trimmed off right there. So when you are trimming beef and you want to get nice thin strips, the best thing to do, get a nice long knife and cut it across the grain on a bias and you can get nice thin strips and just let the knife do the work. As long as you have a nice sharp knife, the knife will do the work and you don't have to press that hard. You don't have to press, you don't have to tug. Nice sharp knife, it'll do all the work for you. So just get it right there. Just put your knife at an angle and just slice right through. See? just like butter. And the knife will do the work for you. So use the entire length of the blade. And that way you don't have to keep going. Because the last thing you want to do, especially with beef, is you don't want to saw. So you want one clean stroke. You don't want to saw because that tears up the grain of the beef. So you don't want to do that. So you want nice, even, clean strokes. So use the entire length of the blade, which is why, of course, we're using a nice long blade here. So again, just keep on going like that. So these are great steaks for a dish like this because it's super tender. You cut it across the grain, and that also increases the tenderness of the, uh, of the beef because you don't have long, fat strands to deal with when you're trying to chew. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around with us. So we got all our beef sliced and chopped, ready for the combination lo mein and beef and broccoli. Now for the combination lo mein, we are gonna chop up some pork. So what I'm gonna do is just cube this. So first thing I'm gonna do is trim off some of this excess fat here. Again, tasty stuff, but we don't really need it for tonight. So again, just gonna cube this up into chunks. So something like that. And we're going to do just little chunks, something like that, something you'd find, you know, in, uh, in combination lo mein or, you know, fried rice or something like that. If you guys just hang out with us for a couple more minutes, we'll, uh, we'll go chop up some chicken as well. Hey, guys, and thanks for coming back with us. So now we are gonna do the chicken. So I'm just gonna, I've got one chicken breast here that's already been butterflied in half. So now what I'm gonna do with this, instead of cutting this into chunks, I'm gonna cut it into strips. So you know, sort of something like you would find in a combination lo mein with Chinese takeout. Again, trim off some of the excess fat. Some of it's gonna stay in the pan and that's gonna be nice, but we don't need all of it. So what I'm going to do is just cut that on an angle right there. And then I'm just going to go in and cut little strips, sort of like I did with the steak. So I'm just going to cut it on a corner, just slice it down, just like that. Hey, guys. Thanks for sticking around. 
So again, we are having combination lo mein, and with combination lo mein, we are going to have chicken pork and shrimp. Star of the show. These are these these are whole shrimp that still have the tails on. So, but we don't want to use the tails in the dish. So I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to get those tails off without losing most of the shrimp. So what you do is you just go underneath like this, give it a nice split. And then just give it a tug, and there you go. You get the whole shrimp, and you don't and you don't lose any meat. We finished peeling all of our shrimp, so now we're just going to chunk it up. So these little guys, I'll probably just cut once, you know, maybe twice, depending on depending on how big they are. Like this guy is a little bigger, so I'll probably cut it two or three times. You know, this is shrimp. You know, it's going to cook up super quick. We're only going to put it in the saute pan for probably 30 seconds just until it barely gets ink. And then we're going to take that right out because it's going to finish cooking at the end. With Hey guys, I'm back. I want to take you guys through a couple of the steps that we're doing as far as the two sauces that are our main sauces for our two dishes, which are beef and broccoli with snow pea, or in our case, sugar snap peas, um, because that's what they had. And our second sauce, which is for the lo mein. So we have a couple staples that we typically keep in our house, but we don't always have them. Uh, it's based on availability and when we can get them, especially right now. Our sherry cooking wine is a good one to keep in your pantry as well as soy sauce and you can actually use Worcestershire sauce in substitute for a couple of these sauces we have in front here for your fish sauce and your oyster sauce. And if you don't have rice wine vinegar, another good staple is just white wine vinegar, honestly. Or again, we have that uh, sherry cooking wine too. The two are used in contrast with a little Worcestershire um, and your soy sauce definitely will go a long ways. So if you stay right there, I'm going to be chopping up some vegetables and getting them into our two sauces. And shortly after that, we're going to get started on the cooking process. So come on back. Thanks. Hey guys, so I'm back. I'm going to be mincing up about six cloves of garlic in total. And I'm going to split that between the two marinades that we have here, or the two sauces. So three cloves of garlic in one, three cloves of garlic in the other. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the smashing part. Hey guys, I'm just going to start by mincing up the garlic. Now, I do this a couple ways. I actually do the whole, like, put a couple slices in lengthwise, and then I go in the other way, and then I come back through and actually start with the process of, like, mincing it. It just helps it get even smaller, uh, and I'm just looking for really small bits, basically, for these marinades. So one of the things, a trick that I learned a while back in regards to garlic, you know how uh, when you're chopping garlic, it always has a habit of sticking to your knife. If you actually wet it down with just a little bit of water um, before, during, you know, it'll actually help uh, the garlic not stick so bad to your knife. So that's, you know, a little trick that you can try to use in yourself at home. So again, I'm just going one way and then I actually turn the garlic clove on its side here and actually cut lengthwise that way and then I come back through with my blade and just mince it this way. So if you guys stay right there, I'm just going to continue mincing up all my garlic and thrown into the marinade and then I'm going to get a start on the mushrooms. So stay right there and come on back. Hey guys. I'm just going to chop up a few hot peppers next. So, they, which one's this one again? Serrano's. Serrano. And I'm only doing about a half a jalapeno. I'm actually only going to be adding these spicy peppers to the beef with broccoli. Because uh, I like my lo mein to have all those other flavors, um, but not super spicy. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get these chopped up and into that sauce so that they can start permeating through. and really releasing some of that hotness. We are leaving the seeds in, guys, but you do not have to do this. Also, know that you guys don't have to add any spice to this if you don't want to. Some of the spices you can play around with. Um, we actually, for most of these recipes that we're going to be including, usually add a little extra ginger um, and a little extra garlic, and uh, that's because we like those things. So, 
make it your own, make it unique, and always make it fun. Just get this all on here. Now the mushrooms we are putting into the combination main, but I think I'm going to put a couple small pieces in with beef and broccoli too, just because that woodsiness uh, well, actually tastes pretty good in the background. So I'm actually going to slice these. Uh, so just regular portobello mushrooms. Seems we get those pretty often as of late, but it's only because they're pretty much the only mushroom that they have available on Instacart. So. doing too thin a slice guys because I'm looking to actually get some larger pieces in here. All right so I'm just going to continue chopping up our mushrooms here. When I come back I'm just going to show you the two sauces with the green onion chopped as well and show you how we're going to be putting everything together. So stay right there and I do hope you come back. Thanks. Hey guys so I'm just going to go ahead and cut up our green onions here. I am going to kind of split this into three parts. I do want to put some fresh to the side along with the parsley so that we have it towards the end uh, to garnish over the top. And that's also so it hits you with that fresh flavor um, just as you take a bite. So as far as the green onions go, they actually have a milder onion flavor to them. They're not very spicy. They don't hit you really hard on the palate or anything like that. They're just very, very mild. You can definitely put it on at the last minute too as a garnish over the top. So again, it hits you with that freshness just like you would with parsley or a shot of citrus or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these finely minced up. Just looking for tight little pinwheels, if you will, or tight little circles. We're just going to go all the way through to the end. All right. So we've got our first green onion minced up. You can kind of see those small little disc-like pieces. They'll be great in this marinade. And again, we'll reserve a little too for just on top for that little extra freshness. So if you guys stay right there, when we come back, we're going to put all these sauces together. And we're going to start cooking. Thanks guys. Not the last part. All right guys. I'm not chopping blind or anything here. But uh, yeah, there's still an onion. So there's some uh, perfume in the air in regards to some burning that's going on with my eyeballs. But I have all the green onion chopped. So I am going to go ahead and try to take out just a small, what would be the equivalent of a tablespoon. So I can split it between the two dishes at the finale. And then the rest of them are going to go into the two sauces. So definitely check out the recipe down below. And I hope you guys make this because I promise it will be good. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming back. Now we are going to start our combination lo mein. First thing I want to do, I got my nice hot Dutch oven here. I'm going to put a little canola oil just in the bottom there. And then... We're going to start our beef. So just looking to get it nice and brown. Just throw that in there. Uh, that's the kind of sizzle you're looking for. Okay. Now I'm just looking to get this a little brown. Render out some of that beef fat that we have going in here. This is going to brown up pretty quick. So, and then after this gets browned up, I'm going to go in with some pork. The beef goes quick. It's got those little bits on the bottom. That's the fond, and that's going to be amazing when we deglaze. All right, so the beef is ready to get pulled. Just going to pull that out. Oh, yeah. Look at all those delicious bits down there on the bottom. So we're going to deglaze with that beautiful sauce that, that we made a little earlier, and that is going to add so much flavor, so much flavor. To this combination lo mein. Alright, so now we're going to hit it with some pork. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. Okay, there, yeah, there we go. 
Just let that pork get in there, render out some of that pork fat. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit more canola. You really wanna keep this stuff moving around. It's gonna brown up pretty quick. Yeah, see the pork is almost on already. So right after the pork, we're gonna hit some chicken in here. Oh, the smells coming out of there are already fantastic. And we haven't even really done that much seasoning yet. We're gonna hit it with some chicken. And then at the very end, I'm gonna throw the shrimp in for just like 30 seconds, just to get the shrimp a little bit pink. And then I'm gonna pull it out because we don't want rubbery shrimp. So, and at the very end, we'll put the shrimp back in oh, yeah. for just another minute or so. And then the shrimp will be perfectly cooked. Okay, our pork is ready. And as you can see, we are really, really, really building up a nice crust on the bottom of this. And that's gonna be really, really amazing when we pour that sauce in. You know, when you're working with cast iron, it's nice and hot. Sometimes you gotta move quick. I'm gonna put just a little more oil the bottom there. There we go, maybe another tablespoon. And then the chicken. Oh, oh missed the guy. There we go. Yeah, now this chicken's gonna go quick too. We cut these into nice strips. So again, just keep this moving around. Yeah, so don't be discouraged, guys, about having combination romaine, especially since you can see how fast it goes. So it's, it's barely a lot of components that we clean, but truly they're super quick. So mostly the chopping and the dicing that takes the longest, really. The cooking process comes together in just a few short moments. The one thing with the chicken, it is gonna take a little bit longer. You wanna make sure your chicken's fully cooked. With the beef, beef doesn't need to be fully cooked. So the pork you want to make sure is fully cooked and the chicken you want to make sure is fully cooked. We are almost done with our chicken and it's beautiful. You can see right here in the bottom, the chicken has rendered out some of its fat and it's actually already started deglazing the pan, which is really, really nice. This is going to be, this is going to be quite special, I think. That's the best part about making something yourself too. You can put your own spin on it. and. It ends up being just all your favorites. All right, guys, we are good here. Our chicken is good. We're gonna go ahead and pull our chicken now. Oh yeah, there we go, look at that. Like I said, the chicken rendered out some of its fat already started deglazing the bottom of the pan. You get those nice crispy bits. There we go. Now all we're going to do is, like I said, shrimp. 30 seconds and we're good to go. I'm just going to plop it in here and then I'm going to immediately start pulling it out because I don't want rubber shrimp. So put that in there right there. Oh, missed some. There we go. One thing I'm going to do is grab another set of tongs because I this these tongs touch raw chicken. So I'm going to grab another set of tongs. We don't want to cross contaminate. I got a shrimp in here. You guys can see it's already starting to turn a little pink. So I am going to pull this shrimp out in, like I said, 30 seconds. We don't want rubbery shrimp. All right, I'm pulling this shrimp right now. Yeah, you guys can see that it's still kind of white, but it's just barely turning pink. That's, that's what we want. There we go. Our shrimp is out. All our meat is cooked. We've got our great fond on the bottom of this pot for our combination lo mein, and that's going to be amazing. Hey guys, I'm back. So I'm going to get the basis of our sauce here that we had started earlier. And like I said, the recipe will be down below. It's just a lo mein sauce with a couple ingredients in it. Super simple. We're going to add the vegetables and the lo mein noodles to cook in the broth, and then add the chicken and the beef and all the mushrooms back in at the same time. So bear with me here, I'm just gonna pour all that good stuff in here. 
all the garlic. We've got some sesame seeds in there. Cornstarch will help thicken it up a little bit. Get all those little bits off the bottom of the pan there. There we have our little main noodles. They come in these little packets with these little strings on the side of them. I always have fun taking these off. I'm going to drop them right in. Now the one thing about these guys, they don't take too long, four to seven minutes and they're done. So as soon as these guys are done, we're going to have everything back in the pool. Last of the lo mein, I did a full pack. It has like three small bunches in it. So I'm just getting that in our sauce here. They're only going to take about four to seven minutes to actually cook up. So we do want to go ahead and add in our mushrooms right over top and it'll hold in that heat so they'll even cook even faster. But the mushrooms are going to almost immediately start drinking up that moisture. So be careful. Just keep an eye on it. When we come back, I'm going to be putting in the meat back in along with the shrimp. And just basically, you're just waiting for everything to thicken up as far as the juices go. I can't wait to show you guys this dish. All right, guys. So my vegetables of choice, Asian medley here. I'm just going to go ahead and throw the whole bag in. I let them sit out on the counter just for a few short minutes. But basically, they're all the veggies that we need in there. There's little pieces of carrot. There's corn. There's broccoli. There's sugar snap peas, all the good stuff. At this point, we've gone ahead and our noodles have cooked about, took them about six minutes actually, and they were almost done. So we're good there. Adding back in the chicken, the beef, the pork, the shrimp, getting them all into the pool here and just getting everything stirred in. So those noodles will continue to cook, the shrimp will continue to cook, and our sauce will continue to thicken up. So. Stay tuned, we're going to show you dish number two. So we're going to get our second dish ready, and this is going to be the beef and broccoli. I got my nice hot cast iron right here, So, and I'm going to throw those beef strips in that I cut up earlier. Just hit it again with a little canola, just in the bottom there. There we go. And we're just going to shove all those bad boys in the pan. Beef and broccoli, guys. No idea. It's so super simple. This is going to come together so quick, you're, you're not even going to know what happened. And it's going to be amazing when it's done. You won't know the difference. Trust me. So we're just going to get our beef going here. I'm going to let that cook down just a little bit. Just to get most, most of the red out. And then I'm going to hit it with the sauce. So this is the sauce that we did. So there's so much good stuff in here. Again, the recipes will be in the bottom. So you'll be able to see them. And you'll be able to make this at home. Better than takeout, guys. Better than takeout. Absolutely. You are so right. My beef is coming along nicely. So like I said, I'm just going to get most of the red out. Let that go there. Maybe get a little char on those puppies. Hey guys, our steak is very, very nice here. You can see that beautiful, those beautiful brown bits, all that fawn that's on the bottom of this pan right here. And that is looking amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with some broccoli. There we go. Sugar snap peas. Don't forget my sugar snap peas. Oh, I won't forget your sugar snap peas. They take long just gonna, to cook. I'm just going to mix that in there. There we go. Now we're going to hit it with some sugar snap peas. Everybody into the pool. Yes. Between the broccoli and the sugar snap peas, they have a decent amount of residual water left in them. So. We can deglaze the pan with that, so I'm going to just scrape the bottom with my tongs here and get some of those brown bits off the bottom. That's going to be really nice. And we'll finish deglazing with this amazing sauce over here. These are coming along really nicely. So now I'm going to hit it with the sauce. 
I'm just going to give it a quick stir. And then everybody in. Oh, look at that, guys. Oh, yeah, look at that. Don't want to leave anybody out. Oh, no. No, look at that. See that? I'll take that, babe. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to pump the heat on this, bring this back up to a boil. Okay, and now this is just going to simmer for just a couple of minutes while the broccoli and the sugar snap peas soften up a little bit, and that sauce will also thicken up nicely. You guys come on back, and we'll show you the plates. Hey, guys, we're back. Guess what? We did it. We have Chinese <laughs> takeout. So super simple and easy, but definitely well worth it. Absolutely. I think uh, I'm ready to eat. What about you? Oh, I am starving. Let's see, go ahead and take this combination of the heat. Yeah, so uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a great night. Bye, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Bye.